What does it mean to be a vulnerable Christian man? Walking through life weak and powerless is not what Jesus had in mind for us. It's time to fight. It's time to get comfortable being uncomfortable. We are OB, Sean, Brandon, and Shane, and this is the Welcome back to the Uncomfortable Truth. Truth. We are here. We've got a special guest today. His name is Blake Dover. Uh, Blake is from the East Texas area, but we'll get into that a little bit more here in just a little bit. Uh, we typically like to start out with a uncomfortable truth opening. Uh, Shane's usually the, the the animated uncomfortable one that gets into all the uncomfortable situations, and we, sometimes we we just kind of uh, you know we'll we'll throw our two cents in every now and again. Um, anyway, it's really uncomfortable when you wake up and you think. Oh, it's time to get up, and then you look at the alarm clock, and it's three thirty. It was four forty today for yeah. me. And it's funny because for me it was three thirty. Was it really? Yeah, three thirty. You know, hopped up and I looked at my phone. Yeah, man. <laughs> I well, my problem was is I couldn't go back to sleep. Yeah. Um, I was, you know, you. I immediately got someone on my mind, and I couldn't stop thinking about them, and it made me think that the Lord had me thinking about them for a reason, mm-hmm. and like I, maybe I needed to write them a note or something. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so anyway, I was like literally writing the note in my head. Um, and then I'm sitting there going along and beep, 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 beep. There goes the alarm clock at six o'clock and you're like, okay, I just missed my last hour and a half of sleep, but Lord did it for a reason. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it's all good. It was, it was an uncomfortable, uh, morning for me. I think I got a good five or six hours, so I think I'm going to be good for the day. Um, what time did you say you get up every morning? 4.30. 4.30. So maybe the Lord was just wanting me to get up at the same time that you get up every day. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> Unfortunately, I went to bed at about, I think, I think maybe 11 is about when I fell asleep. Um, so I got I got a little bit of sleep, but not, not as much as I would have liked. Anyway, Sean... Will you start us in prayer? Uh, yes, lead us in prayer. For and sure. Get going. <clears throat> Dear God, just uh, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, these men and just surrounding me with people who <clears throat> sharpen me and so we can sharpen one another, Lord. Thank you for uh, just all that you do, Lord. Uh, we're just truly grateful for your, uh, for your grace and mercy. Uh, Lord, just uh, um, help Blake to, to just... Uh, Share his journey and just, Lord, just I hope that it, if it can just reach one person, Lord, for for your son, Jesus Christ, uh, we're just be truly grateful for that. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I'm going to let Sean go uh, introduce Blake. This introduction is going to be new to me, too. Uh, Blake and I have gotten to speak very little this morning, so I'm looking forward to getting to meeting you, man, um, and, and hearing, hearing all about uh, your life and your journey with the Lord. But anyway, Sean, you want to introduce Yes, Blake for course? sure. Um, so I, I guess it was back in 2019 was the first time I, I met um, Blake and uh, Brooke, your wife. And um, we um, were getting them signed up. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm in the insurance industry, and uh, we were getting them signed up for uh, Home and Auto. And uh, anyway, so uh, that's how um, – we uh, that's how the introduction was met. I believe at the time at the time were you a student pastor at Crossroads, correct? Yeah, yeah I was and, still a student pastor. At yep. Crossroads. And um, so um, it's been interesting, uh, you know, over the years, just kind of, you know, whenever you you meet somebody and they're young and they're, uh, you know, kind of just starting life, they're uh, I always call them a rising star. You know, they're uh, they're getting their life going, figuring it out. They got young kids and. And that was uh, Blake and Brooke, and um, you know they uh, I, we immediately had uh, the connection of um, being Christian brothers and sisters, and so that was that was always a good thing, you know. I mean, it's always good whenever you can connect with uh, any new somebody who you're doing business with, right? And you know uh, you're excited about getting a new client, but then whenever they're also a, a fellow believer, uh, I think there's a whole nother. Um, level of connection there and so you know uh, he shared with me a little bit about what was going on and then I guess fast forward a a, a few years um, and uh, yeah it's been about three years hasn't it and uh, fast forward a few years uh, they um, uh, I kind of watched you along the way I I think you were also into hunting you'd killed several (laughs) and uh, I and you know no offense to anybody who's not a hunter and 
then uh, y'all got into to your own business. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about your, your business and, and, and what you're doing above and beyond uh, being a student pastor, but you're now a senior pastor, right, at right. Uh, Southside Baptist Church, and yes. so he's he's graduated from student to senior pastor over his own church, and uh, and God's doing some pretty cool things in his life, and uh, absolutely. So uh, I I wanted you know just to kind of you know share with us your journey and 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 how you and your wife are now entrepreneurs, and and just really what God's doing in your life because for me from the outside looking in, it's it's pretty cool, man. It really yeah. is. Well, it's been pretty cool for me, too, because it's a story that's totally marked by God's grace and provision. Um, awesome. Absolutely every single part of the way. Uh, and so it began with uh, just really around 2018, um, because, and I have to go back that far, because uh, the coffee shop is totally tied with the Lord bringing us to Henderson uh, and, and bringing us to Southside for me to pastor the church there. And, um, and so going back to 2018, around that time, I really began to feel just a strong urge and call and equipping to preach. And so I was still student pastor at that time. Obviously my pastor at Crossroads at the time had left. And, um, and so that provided more opportunity for me to step up and lead, uh, at Crossroads in that, in that absence. And then, that hunger really continued to grow, uh, went through some, some challenges uh, personally and professionally, and then uh, through those challenges, the Lord just pushed me deeper into His Word um, awesome. and to a greater uh, appreciation for His Word, a greater love for His Word. And, uh, and so through that, it really grew me in that season of challenge and grew um, just my my personal disciplines, my spiritual disciplines, and uh, went through a pretty big weight loss in that journey. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was uh, just all of that tied together and uh, went through a lot of rejection because as I was desiring to preach, I was trying to pursue that and uh, pretty much just kept getting, uh, I would look for pastoral openings in in the East Texas area, some outside the East Texas area, and just kept getting uh, the same rejection letter pretty much copy and paste just every time. Mm -hmm. Um, And most of it... If you don't mind um, backing it up, did you you go to seminary? Did you go to... Where did you Where did you go to college? Yeah, so my education, I went to East Texas Baptist University. Awesome. Graduated from there in 2013 with my bachelor's, and 2014 with my master's. Awesome, so, awesome. Where yeah. did you go to high school? Uh, I went to Bullard High School. Oh, really? Yeah, awesome. Awesome. they're just south of Tyler. Yeah, yeah. very cool. So East Texas, born and raised. That's right. Right. And, yeah. And um, it's funny. Some of our good friends are from Bullard, and their uh, kids go to ETBU now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, anyway. So, left ETBU, uh, did you immediately, after you got your master's, did you immediately start at Crossroads? So, before I graduated with my bachelor's, actually, I started as uh, a part-time student pastor at First Baptist Church Mount Enterprise. Okay. Uh, so, that okay. was my first. Yeah. Uh, Pretty small first church. ministry position. Yep. Just small country church. And um, and so, that was my, my first step in uh, vocational ministry. Awesome. I had been a student intern at my, my home church and done some stuff like that, but that was my first uh, ministry position. And then from there, went to, went to Crossroads and was at Crossroads for seven and a half years awesome. as a student pastor. So and, and just really felt God's calling to continue pursuing and, and, and going toward him in, yeah. in a, in a more of a senior position and more of a yeah, just as, uh, like I said, in that season of challenge, uh, as my love for God's Word grew, my desire to preach God's Word, um, and, you know, obviously in the student ministry role, you're preaching um, weekly, but it's a little different when you're you're leading the church and preaching um, on Sunday mornings, and so uh, every opportunity I got, I, I took it and, and ran with it and so whenever you're coming up with a, a sermon each week, <clears throat> the other day whenever uh, we met and we were kind of reviewing some of your stuff and <clears throat> we were there at your um, coffee shop, I asked if you prepare your sermons there at the coffee shop and I think you said you had a couple of times, but usually not. How is it? A, is there a lot of pressure on you each week 
to come up with a new like creative, you know, you're like, oh man, you know, what am I going to preach about this week? Or, or do you feel like it comes pretty natural? So uh, it comes natural because uh, what I preach is uh, is the word, and so when you stay true to the word, the word uh, tells you what you're preaching. Right. right. Sure. Right. And so um, I think a lot of times we see that in a lot of very very popular, very well known churches. There's a lot of um, value placed in uh, the the shock value and uh, constantly coming up with these new the performance. Yes, yeah. all of these new uh, analogies and ideas and all these different um, stage props and all the right. different stuff that goes into it. But um, when you stay true to the word, the word tells you what you're preaching. Sure. And so uh, that honestly takes all the pressure off of me uh, from that standpoint That's of cool. trying to think of like, do I, how creative do I have to be? Am I being creative enough? And it's like, well, um, you know, the text is what drives uh, the sermon. So the pressure then is not how creative do I have to be? How, um, how, you know, eloquent do I have to be? But uh, the pressure is, I better make sure that I'm in the Word. Right, sure. And I know what it's, what it's saying, uh, that I've spent the time, the necessary time with the text, wrestling with it, um, going through the Greek and the Hebrew, and uh, hearing what other pastors, how they've preached it, and uh, and then all of that, uh, that's where the pressure is, is making sure that I've, I've handled the text sure. uh, in a worthy manner. So Very, very cool, man. Awesome. So did you take on the pastoral role prior to opening the coffee shop or was it vice versa? Yeah. So uh, when what's interesting is in that just that difficult season I was going through, uh, Southside was going through probably (laughs) definitely even more of a difficult season. Uh, The church went through a split and just really uh, just really difficult, nasty time of uh, a lot of people leaving and uh, arguing and just just nasty stuff that you would not like to I'm see. So I've seen that happen many times over the years in churches. Unfortunately, you know? but um, mm. God, by in His grace, uses that oftentimes um, to either um, you s- you'll see a church just completely cease to exist, or in this instance, um, everybody that left uh, were those that you would want to leave. Yeah, right. and so the church that I was left with, uh, in the way that I look at it, well, by the time that uh, the Lord brought us together, and the Lord brought me to Southside, uh, the people that are there have been so gracious and uh, so just affirming of uh, of me and my leadership, and uh, their uh, love for God's word was evident from beginning in the interview process Mm -hmm. and and so it's just been a very very sweet testimony of uh, you know you'll hear a lot of times people ask me so how's it going and they're kind of they're asking that waiting for me to give them like man it's been so hard (laughs) you know people won't listen to me and and I tell them like everything's just been so good (laughs) yeah. <laughs> yes, it That's really awesome. has. How, cool. um, it's, How long have you been there? Uh, it'll be, see, it was a year back in October, so okay. a little, about yeah. a year and a half. Awesome. You know, something awesome. like that. So tell me about the inspiration uh, for the coffee shop. I mean, yeah. um, because that's kind of a platform in, it, in itself, isn't it? Absolutely. It's it's made uh, plenty of, created so many more opportunities for me as a new pastor in the community to build relationships within the community, to meet more people that wouldn't, you know, have donned the doors of Southside. Uh, <coughs> a lot of them don't even know, didn't even know where Southside was, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, the the idea for the coffee shop, my wife and I, you know, living in Marshall for seven and a half years, spent a lot of time Joe Pine. at Joe Pine <laughs> and uh, really love uh, two of the owners that we are really close with. They're uh, Gio and Jill Davis, Jeffrey and, and Jill Davis. And uh, and so we spent a lot of time at Joe Pine. Uh, me, individually, you know, I'd spend time there, you know, Bible study, reading the word or uh, doing sermon prep. Uh, more so, <laughs> more so I did at Joe Pine than I do at my own coffee shop. Uh, and then, 
uh, I'd take my wife on dates there, take my daughter on dates there. And so we just spent a lot of time. We love Joe Pine. So when we moved to Henderson, we were actually having a conversation with the couple that we bought our house from. And uh, the the Knight family, and uh, we've become, uh, they've become sweet friends of ours, and it's just been a, a cool relationship. But we were asking them, so where's the best place in town to get coffee? And we were wanting to know where's our new Joe Pine. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what we were looking for. And they said, well, honestly, they said there, there used to be this place downtown called Mojo's. Uh, everybody loved it. And, you know, it just uh, it didn't work out. Some stuff happened and it had to close. And uh, and so now probably the best place is Herschel's. And so we were kind of like, oh, that's know. that's the that's the lunch spot. right? Yeah. 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 And so we were like, that's great. Uh, that, you know, that's not necessarily what we were looking for. And so we walked away from that conversation um, and saying to ourselves, saying to each other, like, man, somebody should really open a coffee shop here. This is like great town. Obviously, we love it already. We, we're we excited the Lord has brought us here, and it's got an awesome downtown area. It does. The, the downtown area is really cool. It is. Yeah. Uh, and um, I said that before I was a downtown shop owner. So That's cool. Um, and so, you know, we were just like, somebody should do that. And then... Literally, we kind of like, what if what if we open a coffee shop? <laughs> uh, and so, the the backstory to that was, uh, my wife was in education for um, you know our entire time after graduating college, and um, she she loved her time in education. She loved the people she worked for. Uh, she loved each and every opportunity she had, but her passion for teaching had long left mm-hmm. and she was desiring to <coughs> do something else and so we for years were trying to think of what what could she do and we would come up with ideas we'd have different opportunities presented to us and we'd think about them we'd talk about them together and nothing resonated with her you know and so it's like why why leave something you're not passionate about to go do something else that you're not passionate about right and then when uh, when we really started to think about this opportunity and this idea of opening a coffee shop, I could tell that this resonated with her more so than any uh, anything else that we had thought of. Mm-hmm. And when I saw that uh, as a husband uh, and saw that we had the means and the opportunity and just seeing how the Lord was lining this up, I knew, you know, that I was going to do whatever I could and hustle as hard as I had to to make that happen uh, so that we could do that. Um, not only just because it's it's fun to start a new business. That's mm-hmm. a great new adventure. It is. I love a challenge. I love I to would hustle. encourage everybody to start a, start a new <laughs> business if it, you've never tried it. You <laughs> learn a lot about yourself oh, and unbelievable. you just learn so much. But uh, when I saw that that was going to be something, an avenue for her to do something new and challenging, exciting, and something that she was passionate about, uh, I knew that, you know, we were going to make that happen. Awesome. And so that was how, uh, so that was, that was how campfire started. Got so, it, got it so started. the name of the coffee shop is campfire. Yes. Okay. Is it campfire coffee? Campfire coffee? coffee co. Okay. That's awesome. That's, that's a really that's cool. That's our name. DBA. Our, yeah. our LLC is Russ County coffee yeah. company. What is, so. what is the address of campfire coffee? 100 East main street, 100 East main street. And, and I'm going to tell you something. It, it, in downtown mm-hmm. Henderson, this has got to be the coolest location. I yes. mean, it really is. I mean, the way that I know that it was all kind of a godsend is because it is genuinely the coolest location in downtown Henderson. That's awesome. Um, uh, I mean, so. big, beautiful windows and doors and uh, really a lot of history there yep. in, the, in the building. Oldest, and, oldest downtown building uh, because there's a, a fire in the late 1800s that destroyed almost all of downtown Henderson. And it was one of the first buildings that was Came rebuilt. Back. Yeah. yeah. So, that. so that was it. That's the inspiration for for the campfire, uh, because because not, it, not exactly. No. It was part of it mm-hmm. uh, for sure that there had been a fire related with uh, our building with downtown. Um, so, uh, with with campfire, we uh, we went through so many names just trying to think of yeah. what we were going to name this place because the name is key. You know, like uh, one of you know the. The company that we're partnered with as our supplier, Silver Grizzly Coffee, uh, right down the street here in Longview, and uh, they've been invaluable. We love those guys, but I mean, 
what a cool name, Silver Grizzly. Yeah. And then it's also like so unique. You're not going to see that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, that's what we have to have. We got to come up with something that's mm -hmm. that's unique that kind of also communicates. Uh, we wanted to communicate what we were about. And so really before we even came up with a name, we were also thinking of um, what's our what's our mission statement and what are our values. And so, uh, you know, our mission statement is uh, providing an exceptional sit-down coffee experience in the heart of downtown Henderson. And our values are fostering community, um, fostering community, enriching downtown, and preserving the heritage. And uh, so the campfire is a, a place where community is fostered uh, for you know, centuries people have gathered around mm -hmm. the campfire. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where. Wow, that's got a lot of meaning behind yeah. it. That's awesome. Uh, and and so uh, that's where that's where people have gathered to uh, cook their meals, to do life together. Uh, that's where you know people like to just come together around a fire and share stories and talk about life. And that's what we wanted our coffee shop to be: is a place where people wanted to come uh, to sit down together to enjoy an exceptional cup of coffee and to do life together, to share those stories, to share the valleys and the mountaintops and everything in between. So That's cool. pretty cool, man. So there, were, there was a lot of thought that no went into doubt. that. There was. Yeah. That's <laughs> very neat. So you guys are about a year into the coffee shop, too? We're getting close. Uh, so September will make a full year. Uh, right around this time last year is when the journey began okay. as far as securing the building, uh, and then beginning to shape out the building. Um, and as far as that goes, you know, as soon as we started to think of this idea, I was driving my daughter to, uh, she was at First Methodist Day School at the time. Now she's in kindergarten. What is her name? Uh, Blakely. Awesome. Blakely Joe. So our, our children are named after each of us. We're Blake, Brooke, Blakely, and Brooks. How about that? <laughs> and That's so, cool. Um, so I was driving Blakely to school, and... Uh, I have to I, I have to drive by our location in order to to take her to school. Uh, so in Henderson, downtown is um, there's an, the main downtown intersection and there's four main streets: north, south, east, and west main. <laughs> and so uh, if you go through downtown, you have to drive by our coffee shop one way or the other. And uh, so I saw that and it didn't look like there was anything there. The windows were covered and everything. So I was like, man we do this that would be the perfect it's spot a jam up location uh, yes i was like i don't know why nothing's there now but we got to jump on it and so um we did we we reached out got got a hold of the building owner and there was already a dentist office was in talks was in conversations to to take over that space and so we're like man that would that would have been perfect. perfect and we heard from our real estate agent like a month or few weeks later something like that uh, the same real estate agent that helped us buy our house we she told us that uh you know whatever the talks were with the dentist's office fell through and now this location was available and we were like boom we're done like tell us you know get us a hold of the owner let us meet with them and and we're doing this and i think that was also kind of a shock for our owner our owners uh the family that owns our building just have been so tremendously gracious and they've been so awesome to work with uh but i think at first they're you know they're kind of like so if and you know if you do this and if y'all come in and if y'all and i was i'm like in my mind i'm like i don't think you understand we are doing this <laughs> 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 this is happening uh and i was you know, i told my wife after that first conversation i was like she'll learn like that you know when i set my sights on something and set a goal like like it's gonna be accomplished it's gonna, <laughs> gonna cool. it down that's cool and uh and so right around this time last year is when we really started you know we signed the contract on the lease and uh they gave us a break on the lease until you know the shop was got the business going yeah, yeah. Uh, which was very gracious <laughs> of them and they you know prior to it being our coffee shop it was an Edward Jones office, so there were lots of walls. It was very segmented, and so they, you know, had the walls taken down for us. Right. And uh, but then after that point, we really got to hustling, and we refurbished the floors, we painted walls, we painted the columns that are in our building, and uh, then of course had super cool furniture. Yeah, yes. I love the furniture in had there. 
had plumbing done, built. We, uh, my wife and I both built the tables that we have there in the shop. Awesome. And, uh, and so we pretty much, everything that we could do ourselves, we did ourselves yeah. outside of electrical and plumbing, which obviously you have to have uh, per building codes and all that you have to sure. have done by license. So was this the first time you'd ever started a business? Oh, yeah. From scratch? Oh, yeah. Kind of cool <laughs> that, that um, Jeff, you know, over in uh, your buddy over in Marshall, um, you know, I, I, I would imagine you've been able to lean on him a lot. Big time. Through this process. Uh, so w- when we were dreaming up this idea, we called uh, Geo and, and Jill and just asked, hey, can we meet with you guys? And uh, and we just bounced questions off of them. And they asked good, good questions, yeah. good hard questions of us, like just to make sure that we were – you know, thinking of everything that we should, and uh, and so they, yeah, their their friendship and their partnership has also been in, invaluable for us. Very cool. So, um, and you know, after visiting with you the, the other day, um, you are, you are kind of thinking about maybe doing a mobile unit as well, uh, like to go to like maybe gatherings and type of deal. What what a, is that going to be? Just kind of a new division of your current business or yeah so uh we fully kitted out a mobile coffee cart so it's got its own espresso machine it has uh, a water pump on it and so all we have to do is fill up a a five gallon bucket with uh, our filtered water there at the shop so filtered water is a big thing in coffee Mm -hmm. you know the the quality of your water is going to determine the quality of the taste of your coffee and so that's it i didn't know that that's cool oh yeah so um so with that, if you go mobile, then you have to think about, well, where are we getting our water from? Right. And so we set our coffee cart up to where we're not dependent upon that, and then that could cause a bad coffee experience. So we get our filtered water there at the shop, <laughs> fill it up in a bucket, and uh, pump it right out of there into the espresso machine. Well, that explains why my coffee never tastes like it does whenever I go into <laughs> a, a, a jam-up coffee shop. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's neat. So you said coffee cart. It, it sounds like it's going to be more of maybe like something that you go around the square and stuff with? or Yeah, so the, the real big idea with that is we want to use it to, to cater private events, okay. uh, weddings and parties and uh, company, you know, celebrations, things like yeah. that yeah. Uh, is, is the, the big deal. Because if you go, uh, if you use it for more public use, uh, that requires different types of licensing everything whereas gotcha. if, you, if you're hosting private events it's a different story so awesome awesome man what a cool story yeah. uh so you guys are five months into your journey six months into your journey you're a year you're in four or five months into your journey with your new pastoral position you're six months into your new journey as a, as a coffee shop owner as a business owner uh um, year and a half as a pastor right yeah yeah, yeah so I mean, a lot of, lot of newness. How old are your children? Uh, we ha- So uh, I have to think about it because they're both soon to have birthdays. Okay. So uh, we have one that's five and one that's one. So one that's soon to be six and soon to be two. Gotcha. So you, you got a full plate. Yes. <laughs> you got a full <laughs> to plate. To say the least. Yes. That's, that's, uh, it, you, you, sh- you probably don't have trouble figuring out things to talk about each week. <laughs> no, no, no. And, uh, and I always tell my people and I tell my family, you know, um, the pastor's family is the low hanging fruit of pastoral analogies. Yes. So uh, I try to avoid the low hanging fruit. Now, every now and then you just have to reach up there and take it. Uh, Sometimes it's just worth it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I would yeah. imagine. Um, that's, that's super cool. So where did you meet your wife? Tell me about that. We met in college at East Texas Baptist University. We actually met like our freshman year, uh, just had um, mutual friend groups that hung out together and would see each other every now and then. And then uh, our sophomore years when I began to pursue that relationship. Uh, and it was me because she was not interested at first. <laughs> um, and so I just, I was going to the library to uh, do some studying for my Greek. And uh, she was there. She was a math major. And <laughs> she was also studying and doing some homework. And uh, so I uh, you know, I'm trying to think of like how I 
start the conversation and trying not to be awkward, which just makes it even more awkward, you know? <laughs> and so I walk That's over funny. to a little cu- cubicle and I see, you know, she's working on maths. And, but, but I started the conversation with, so what are you working on? <laughs> you know? And she just kind of looked at look me like, like, cause we had never really talked in that kind of context. And she just kind of looked at me like, you know, the look was kind of leave me alone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, math. <laughs> that's and awesome. so that's how it started. That's how it started. But it ended with obviously us being married and having yeah. two kids. Yep. That's very cool. So, yeah. yeah. It's a success it's a, story. It's a cool, yes. it's a cool, cool. Uh, yeah. Cool. Part I want to, uh, I want to kind of go back to, to you taking over this church a little bit, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, it's, you know, my, uh, I'm, I'm aware, um, you know, Sean and I have been, we were born in church. We, we've been in, we've been in Baptist churches our whole life. Uh, we've seen churches get split, you know, over, uh, you know, s- sometimes the most silliest of things. And the older I've gotten, the more silly I realize that some of these things are that really can, can, can just be toxic in, in our church. And, um, it's funny, just yesterday, my wife Amy sent me this little short video clip of this pastor, and he was talking about how, uh, you know, every, you, you've always, you've heard that saying where somebody will say, oh, I don't want to go to church. There's just a bunch of hip- hypocrites there. Right. And, um, and, and you hear that, you know, and, and, and then he, he said, you know, what, he's like, why don't people go to the gym and call all of the people that are out of shape and and overweight hypocrites for being at the gym. Mm-hmm. Have you heard this before? You see, okay, yeah. you That's know, good. and and uh, anyway, and he was like, you know, I was working out the other day, and and there was this lady over there. She was obviously very out of shape, running on the treadmill, and I was thinking, what a hypocrite, yeah. you know, and, and what is she doing here? What right, right does she have to be here? Right, and, and he's like isn't that exactly who should be here? And, <laughs> and, and he was like, he was like, and isn't that maybe exactly who should be in our churches? And, mm-hmm. and he was like, it has it ever dawned on any of you that the people that are in shape at the gym, maybe they've been at this for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, may, maybe they've, maybe they have been working, uh, you know, out for years for mo- maybe most of their life in order to be in the shape that they're in now. And why don't we give those same concessions to our church members and the people that we do church with? You know, we we need the hypocrites in our church because they're not as seasoned. He mm-hmm. was like, and you see that. You can see, you come to any church, mm-hmm. and you're going to see yeah. the seasoned followers and disciples of Christ and the hypocrites. I, I guess at the end of the day, we're all hypocritical sinners, right? That's exactly <laughs> I mean, right. The pastor said... <laughs> I'm a hypocrite, you know, and, and he, and he, and he was like, uh, it, it was just very interesting to me because yeah. it was, I, I've heard that many times throughout my mind. I've heard, you know, there's just hypocrites in the church and, and I've never thought, I've always thought, yeah, there are, you know, and, and, but I've never really given it much more thought than mm-hmm. that. And he right. made me think that's, that's really good. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, would you say it was, maybe a similar situation that you came into? Uh, so coming into Southside, you know, um, there was a lot of scarring from a lot of that, I think. Um, I think people were just not uh, not apprehensive, but just um, cautiously optimistic about what the Lord was doing in bringing me to Southside. Right. Um, a young first time pastor uh after going through what they had been through they went through all of covid with an interim pastor gotcha uh and so you know they and the 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 previous pastor had only been there almost two years maybe maybe a little bit more two years around something like that and the pastor before him was there i think two to three years something like that so they haven't had anybody that's really come in and Right. And, you know, made that their home. Yeah. And so it was just, it was, it was tough. Um, they had just gone through so much. And uh, they're probably just waiting for you to come in and say, I'm, I'm, I'm taking another church position. <laughs> yeah. But I've told them, and one of my church members, you know, has said uh, that she, she hopes to see, uh, see this be kind of like a John MacArthur situation, you know, like, 
you're, you're here 40 years. Yeah. And I think that was honestly one of the neatest things. Um, and this is obviously me kind of talking from a third person perspective about what my church members were thinking, but they have been overwhelmingly supportive of the coffee shop. And I think it was that extra sign of me planting roots. Like as soon as we, um, you know, my in view of a call Sunday, we toured the house that we bought and made an offer. Uh, and so like they, they're like, Oh, you bought a house already. You know, and that's that, you know, the chairman of my committee. That's, <laughs> he's one of my, my, my good friends, uh, as all my church members are, but Dave Pinkerton is, uh, he's just a, a great guy and very unique individual. And he, uh, whenever I told him about a house, he was like overwhelmingly excited. Uh, cause I think it was like, oh, okay. Like, he wants yeah. to be here. He yeah. wants to be here. This guy's yeah. all in. And yeah. then the same thing with a coffee shop. That's planning even deeper roots. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't plan on going anywhere anytime yeah. soon. If you know, I'm buying a house and uh, investing this much time and effort into opening a business. And so mm -hmm. our church members were uh, instrumental in us opening the shop. I had church members helping us coming up there working uh, with that's us so cool. and for us and helping us oh. sand and build and. Yeah, what's just popping in my head is, you know, I always think about how uh, that, that Garth Brooks song, Thank God for Unanswered Prayers, you yeah. know, and you just don't, I mean, whenever you're in the moment, you just don't realize how God has put up these guardrails in your life and whenever you're obedient to him yeah. and he's guiding you down this path. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's very humbling, man. That's I mean, a, absolutely part of this, this testimony uh, because... You know, I think back to all the those rejection letters and how much they hurt and how much I desired to be somewhere and to be preaching. But uh, if things had worked out the way that I had wanted them, I don't think they would have been nearly as sweet and good and right and as this yeah. situation has been. And, it's, and, and so that's that's kind of the emphasis behind. Uh, I don't know if y'all have ever read Augustine's Confessions. Uh, but I it's, not. Uh, mm -hmm. so uh, you got to make sure you get the right translation because it, you know, it's, it's translated, uh, from its original language. And so some of the translations are more dense than others, but, um, the, the whole uh, focus behind the book is it's, it's basically a journal of him looking back on his life and seeing how God was at work from his, his birth to where he is to bring him to the faith that he has in the Lord now mm -hmm. and seeing like, okay, this is how this situation was working out. And even though these were my desires at that time, here's how you were using those and, and shaping me in that moment. And that's totally a testimony of what the Lord bringing me to Southside, the Lord uh, creating the opportunity for us to open campfire is a testimony of is because, um, you know, had things worked out, when and how I desired them, they would not have been nearly this good and, and sweet as, as this has been. That's awesome. Super cool. Yeah. Super cool. Um, I mean, we we make all these plans and we have all these ideas in our head about how our lives are supposed to go, you yeah. know, and, and um, sometimes we get really stuck on that and, and we forget that we didn't make this plan and, and God never intended for us to design this plan he he yep. knew what every day looked like before we were ever created exactly you know and uh that's it's exciting and scary all at the same time you know but uh but to me it's it's grown more into excitement the older i've gotten and the more that i've gotten to know the lord yeah. um the more that my relationship's grown with him and it's like what do you got for me now god you exactly. know um you know i've 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 really changed uh, a lot of my mindset from a why me to a what are you trying to show me through this and, and that took a long long time for me to get there yeah <laughs> it's yeah. it's a tough when you're in those moments of rejection and those trials and, and that adversity in those moments when we know the word tells us that those are our sharpening moments and that and that those are those are our chiseling moments where he's preparing us for something um but in the moment we talk a lot on, on the podcast about in that moment, how it's, it's difficult to recognize that. And, uh, you know, the fact that, that you didn't give up 
and that you continue to allow God to chisel and, and, and that, that rejection, uh, you know, in, in the sales industry, we talk about how a rejection is just one step closer to mm. not being rejected. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so we, it's almost like welcome the rejection, you know, uh, which is very hard to do, Yeah, you know? <laughs> and, and so, uh, I mean, what a really cool testimony to, to be able to, uh, let our listeners hear and, and, and to give us some inspiration, you know, um, yeah. to, to just continue to not give up and, yeah. and to continue down that path. Very cool. Great Thank story. You. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Testimony. You yeah. know, one of the more recent examples of that in my own life, um, in trying to point my family to see how God is working in the moment, uh, is, here about three weeks ago, my grandfather uh, was had a total freak accident. Uh, he was walking across the street. Uh, he and my grandmother and my mom live in Tyler, and he was going to his neighbor's house to look at something. Saw that his neighbor's newspapers had been delivered, so he bent over to pick up his neighbor's newspapers to take them to his neighbor, and a limb fell out of the tree and landed on his head. Wow. Yeah. And so he had a fractured skull and a fractured process in one of his vertebrae, and he's he's in a, a rehab facility now. He spent uh, about a week and a half, two weeks in the hospital. Uh, yeah, about two weeks in the hospital. And then um, now he's been in, in this rehab facility for around a week. And, um, you know, in the early days of this, you know, while he was still in the hospital, um one of my my Bible reading that morning, you know, as a church right now, I, I made us a, a Bible reading plan for to read through the Bible in a year. And uh, each day has like three to four chapters of a main text and then a psalm. And so my psalm that day was Psalm 63. And uh, in Psalm 63, David is in the wilderness, uh, so in the desert, um, running from Saul uh, as, you know, so in this situation, he's supposed to be king because he's the one that God has anointed and said is his king. And Saul won't abdicate the throne, so therefore David has to be on the run. And here he is in the desert, uh, no food, no water, and uh, when he should be in the palace, right? Uh, and and um, and so uh, there's all these things that in our minds would say this is unjust, this is not right, this is not good. But here in Psalm 63, David is uh, saying uh, that he will hunger and thirst for the Lord in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Uh, And so what I told my family was sometimes the Lord takes us to the desert to remind us what it's like to actually thirst so that we know how thirsty we are to be for him. And uh, and so that's the perspective that I I tried to uh, that. The testimony of coming to Southside and starting Campfire, uh, that's the perspective the Lord has provided me to see everything through the lens of his word and then to see, okay, so how is he using this, whatever it is in the moment, uh, for his glory, first and foremost, and then also in that for my good because my good, what I find to be good and what I find to be joyful and right is only found in glorifying him. And so how is he working in that uh, for his glory and for my good? And Amen. Yeah. Good stuff. That's awesome, man. Uh, inspiring. And, and it, it reminds me of one of my favorite verses in the Bible, which is Jeremiah 29, 11. And, and, it, and it just states that, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. You know, and plans for plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans for hope and a future. And, it, and, it, and it's something that I think to myself almost daily uh, yeah. because – I'm so prone to begin making the plans myself. And, and, uh, and I find out so quickly, typically when I start doing that, that I don't make the plans. Yep. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, what a great inspiration for your family and, and we'll be praying for your grandfather. Thank you. Yeah, Thank for you. sure. For sure. Man, Sean, do you have anything else? Man, we just need to like, share, subscribe. And, uh, if you don't mind, you know, smash that like button, right? Uh, yeah, we, for sure. we, uh, we need help, uh, getting our platform out there, you know, so anybody listening or, or watching, uh, that would be awesome. Yep. Anybody, uh, if, if you guys, uh, you know, can think of anyone that would get some inspiration or, uh, you know, uh, just desire to, to know more about Jesus from hearing, you know, yeah. a testimony, uh, 
what what better way than to hear Blake's testimony yeah, here? Yeah, absolutely. So. And thank you for your time today, man. Thank you guys. Yeah, for we having really me on. appreciate this is awesome. it. I pr- I'm really excited about what you guys are doing. I think this is great. Thanks, man. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thank you. Well, go kick the day in the face, and we'll catch you on the next one.